Good morning from New York. I'm Chris Hayes here with Democratic Congressman Jerry Nadler of New York, Heather McGee from the think tank Demos, Michelle Goldberg of Newsweek, The Daily Beast, and Josh Barrow of the National Review Online and the Manhattan Institute. If you're just joining us, we just had uh, uh, Amy Goodman on. We were talking about climate change and a spirited climate change debate ensued during the break. We now turn our attention to Republicans who have finally met a tax cut they don't love. The payroll tax cut extension set to expire on December 31st. <coughs> what is it about this particular tax cut? President Obama is for it. It's a progressive tax cut with a real stimulative effect. And this week, a Democratic bill to cut the payroll tax even lower, which would have been paid for by adding a small tax on incomes over $1 million, was denied an up or down vote despite the backing of a majority of 51 senators, not enough to overcome a Republican filibuster. And a Republican plan to cover the cost of a payroll tax cut by cutting salaries and jobs of federal workers also failed with a majority of Republicans voting against their own plan. Still, Republican leaders seem to understand the political costs of opposing the tax cut, and so they are trying to attach a grab bag of special interest giveaways in order to turn chicken excrement into chicken salad, as John Boehner was reported to have said to his caucus. I'm paraphrasing. Um, the, the, what's so interesting about this, and, and Josh, I, I want you to respond to this. I'm going to play a, a little bit of sound from, from, from Obama in a second. So there's two theories about Republican, what is animating Republican uh, objections to the president, right? There's the good faith theory and the bad faith theory. And the good faith theory is they oppose his policies because they think they're substantively bad. They will bring more ruin, create more uncertainty, hurt the economy. The bad faith theory is that they want the economy to be, be, to be bad because it will be very hard for Obama to be reelected if the econom economy is terrible. And for me, the initial opposition of Repu the Republican caucus to the payroll tax cut is pretty strong evidence of the bad faith theory. Because it's very hard for me to think that they actually think it's bad policy. It's something they've supported in the past. They supported it the first time around. They pushed for it to get it in the stimulus. As they one suggested of the, it. The they suggested it the first time around. And here's, here's Barack Obama essentially making this case. Now, this, this really should not be controversial. A lot of Republicans have agreed with this tax cut in the past. The Republican leader in the, in the Senate said it would, quote, I'm quoting here, it would put money back, a lot of money, back in the hands of businesses and in the hands of individuals. That's what he said. Another Republican leader said it would help small business owners create jobs and help their employees spend more money, creating even more jobs. One Republican even called it a, quote, conservative approach to help put our economy back on track. So what's the problem? Josh Barrow, what's the problem? Well, I think there are a few things here. I think Republicans have a good faith objection to the millionaire's tax to pay for the, to pay for the thing. And I think that's because they, they view this as one of several bites at the apple to drive up the top income but, tax rate, coupled with the taxes that, that were part of the Health Care Act that are about a, a 3% surtax on, on high incomes, the expiration of the Bush tax cuts, and Barack Obama's push for additional millionaire's taxes on top of that. So I think that they, they feel they need to hold the line on that issue. I think also, I, don't, I think that Republicans, there are two ideas that, that, that I I think liberals think Republicans hold that, that are incompatible. Um, because I think Republicans in Congress honestly don't believe that Keynesian stimulus works. I don't think that they think that a tax cut like this affects economic performance because it's temporary. Permanent tax cuts, Republicans believe. But they make, argument, they, make Keynesian, they make Keynesian style arguments in favor of tax cuts all the time. When there's a surplus, they make arguments for tax and cuts that we need to give money back to taxpayers. When, there's, when the economy's in bad shape, they, ma they make Keynesian style arguments for tax cuts and all the time. Never, and they never previously have said tax cuts ought to be paid for. Right. John Kyle said, "Well, expenditures have to expenditures have to be paid for, but uh, tax cuts should never have to be paid for. Until now, until this tax cut, now you got to pay for it, and they don't like to pay for." And this is a question. I think. I think that there's a larger thing. Obviously, I agree with you that yeah. fundamentally the Republicans don't want the economy to improve, don't want anything that the president does to succeed in moving the dial on jobs, but also. It's a question of who actually has economic value in this country, right? If I, I've heard so many Republicans really just scoff at the idea that unemployment insurance can create jobs. Eric Cantor, even when trying to get his caucus to vote for the payroll tax cut, said, yeah, I can't defend it economically because there isn't really an economic sense around the payroll tax cut, but it puts money in the hands of pockets, people in the pockets of people, and that's always good. It's this idea that the people of economic value in this country who can really create jobs have to be either wealthy heirs or you know millionaires billionaires people who are already wealthy the idea that working people can have an influence on economic growth it's just it's just 
counter to the, the well, Republican Well, Josh, I, well, let me get come back yeah. to you because I cut you off. Yeah. Well, this is Republicans not believing in, in Keynesian economics. They don't think that the mere act of putting money in people's pockets creates jobs. I, th I think that Who's there is pockets? some... Well, a payroll tax cut is everybody's pockets. This isn't that progressive a policy, so I don't think well, it's, it's about, not everybody. It's more progressive than some of the other alternatives. It's more progressive than some of the other alternatives, right. but it's you know the the people who get the most benefit from this are people with high incomes, people in the Republican base, people in you know the the top the top quintile or the second quintile do very well under this policy. So I don't well, think that remember, it's about stiffing the poor to oppose. Rem this. Rem well, rem yeah. No, it is. But, but let me just, sorry, let me jump in real quick, just so everyone's clear. Payroll taxes cut out at, at just over a hundred thousand dollars, right? So it doesn't have the the incredibly regressive effect of, say, the Bush tax cuts, which are tax, which are income tax cuts, because those rates keep going up it's and a, up. Because a, the, the, what you, you only pay in the first hundred thousand, right. it's a more progressive cut it's than you would it's get. A th it's a thousand dollars for somebody make a year for someone making fifty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. It's two thousand dollars for someone making a hundred thousand dollars a year. For someone making twenty-five thousand, it's five hundred. Right. So in that sense, it's regressive. Now remember, the in, in the stimulus bill passed two years ago, there was the make a, uh, make work pay uh, provision, which was $400 to every taxpayer and $800 to a couple up to a certain income. That was very progressive. That was uh, uh, very economically stimulative. The Republicans refused to extend it, and what they suggested as the alternative, uh, which the President and the Congress went along with, was this Social Security uh, tax, which is less progressive, less stimulative than that other thing was, but still stimulative and still important now. I, I think there are two things Republicans want from tax policy. One thing they want is they want to constrain spending and they want to, to essentially starve the government of revenue. And I, I think, think they're, the that's, I think they're not very concerned about that right now because the deficit is already so large and revenues are already so low. I don't, I don't think that they view this, especially because it's a temporary one-year tax cut, I don't think they view this as a vehicle to achieve long-term shrinking of government. The other thing they want is lower marginal tax rates to encourage people to work. On rich people. And, and, well, on, on everybody. May, maybe. I, and especially at the top because that's where the rates are the highest and especially on capital because capital is more sensitive to tax rates than, than, than labor is. But much less well, sensitive than question. Republicans. Uh, 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 I, mean, I mean, I think one of the things that's really interesting about this yeah. theory, right, right, is that it's a theory, and, and I don't want to get too in the weeds, but let me make this right. point. Yeah. It's a theory about the, what drives the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world that I don't right. think is absolutely, I think is absolutely without empirical foundation, right? Which, right. Is, that, which is that Mark Zuckerberg is, is, is driven by the marginal tax rate on his income to like, Come up with awesome Facebooky things yeah. well, because, and if you raise if you raise that by five percentage points, Mark Zuckerberg is gonna be like, you know what? Screw it! I'm gonna retire to my my pad in Palo Alto. I mean, that's a caricature of the argument, mm -hmm. but the embedded assumption there right. is fundamentally about that. And I think yeah. that actually we have seen from the performance of the economy under higher marginal tax rates that it just simply doesn't hold as there an is empirical absolute, matter. There is absolutely no empirical evidence for the proposition that people rich or otherwise will invest more uh, if the tax rates are less. Right. People will invest if they think there's a profit potential. And whether that profit potential is taxed at 30% or 40% is not going to make a difference. I, I will say, I will absolutely say, wrong. People I would say to after a, tax. I would say to a point. I would say to a point. Obviously, if we yeah. came up with 100% confiscatory tax, you would see, you would right. see people, yeah. people's behavior change. I want to talk about the... When you had the, 90% tax rates under Eisenhower, you saw plenty of investment. But you never I, had 90% tax rates on capital. That was only on labor income. Capital right. gains rates were only about I, I, want, I want to talk about the, the, the politics of the, of the push for this political, uh, for, for the payroll tax cut with Jen Psaki, former Deputy Communications Director at the White House. She will join us just after this break. Jen Psaki is former Deputy Communications Director at the White House, now working as Senior Vice President, Managing Director at the communications firm Global Strategy Group, which represents a number of financial and energy companies. And we have a link to their full client list on our website, up.msnbc.com, just for the interest of disclosure. Jen, thanks so much for coming on up. I Good really morning. appreciate it. All and right, congratulations so, on the birth of your daughter. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm pretty excited. Um, so I, I want to talk about the, this, the, the, the political argument here. And I wonder, has the, the, the New York Times ran a story, and I think it was probably about five or six months ago, and it was supported by polling, that showed that if you poll Americans, most people don't think their taxes have been cut under Barack Obama, despite the fact that most Americans have received a tax cut. How much of a, that wedge between what has happened to people's taxes and what their perception is, how much of a problem is that politically for the president? 
Well, I think what we've gone through over the last three years has clearly been one of the most challenging economic recoveries in not just a generation, probably a couple of generations. And the making work pay tax cut, which I know was discussed in the last couple of minutes, uh, was very effective. And economists and uh, not the nonpartisan CBO said it was very effective in stimulating the economy. But sometimes people don't notice when there are a few extra dollars in their paycheck uh, every month or every two weeks. So it was hard to notice. But uh, I think it's important to, to, to remember here that when we're talking about the payroll tax cut, we're talking about $1,500 in the pockets of families making $50,000 a year. And when families know that is coming, uh, that is something that they can save. But that is something hopefully they're going to spend more at the grocery store. They're going to spend more uh, at Target. They're going to spend more buying uh, books for their kids, whatever it may be. That's a lot of money. And that's that's something that can not only help people get by, but it can help stimulate the economy on a very everyday and real basis. J just so people are clear, because we've had a few different numbers flying around, it's, it, the, the, if we extend the current tax cut, which is, uh, it would be $1,000 in the pocket of people making 50000 If they even increase the tax cut, which is yes. what the president's pushing for, then it would be $1,500. That's so right. I apologize. Yeah, no, 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 president... you were right. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure, since we had two numbers cited. Um, do, do you think that, let me sort of get on the other side of this question, which mm -hmm. is, if we're going to say, if, as I as a liberal, uh, I'm going to say, well, the Republicans are being hypocrites because they've never found a tax cut they didn't like, and now they're opposing it, and these are Republican policies, well, then maybe I should be opposing it because it's a Republican policy. I mean, is there a problem <laughs> with a Democratic president running primarily on tax cuts, whose chief political argument about what he's done is cutting taxes when cutting taxes um, can only do so much to, to sort of build the foundations for long-term economic growth? Well, there are many different versions of cutting taxes. And one of the very important points here is that cutting taxes for the highest income, you don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to take the word of anybody on the panel. Any economist and any private sector analyst will tell you that is not an effective way of stimulating the economy. The payroll tax cut, making work pay, those are effective ways of stimulating the economy. Now, there are many other ways of stimulating the economy that the president supports. Expending, extending you, uh, unemployment insurance, uh, infrastructure investment. I could go on and on, and I know we don't have all the time in the world here. Uh, but there are different, the problem here is there's a double standard. And Republicans in Congress will say that cutting taxes for the highest income is, is stimulative. It is not. Last time I checked, most Republicans Republicans in Congress are not PhD economists. In They're fact, making statements that are not fact-based. John, John Boehner actually said, I'm not an economist, when asked about what the effect of the payroll tax would be. Uh, Congressman Nadler, you want to say something? Well, uh, Jen is exactly right. Uh, <laughs> one tax cut is not another tax cut. In general, anything that you can do that will put money into the pockets of people who will spend it is stimulated to the economy and will, and, and will help uh, create jobs because if, you, uh, if, if, if I spend money uh, to buy something, then someone else is going to be hired to make it, to, to market it, to sell it, etc. Uh, the problem with uh, 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 tax cuts for millionaires is that by and large they'll only spend a little part of it, a little piece of it, the rest they'll put in the bank or whatever. After you've, built, after you've bought your fifth yacht, what are you spending the money on? Right. Unemployment insurance, on the other hand, someone living on unemployment is, gonna, is living from hand to mouth is going to spend every penny of it, ditto for lower income people on the Social Security. And certainly the wor making work pay was even more stimulated because that was targeted e e at, at working people more. Now, there is a problem obviously with the uh, Social Security thing, which is why I voted against it last year. Um, because it, 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 it takes money away from Social Security. Wait, you, you voted against we, this payroll tax cut the first time around. The, I sure did, which is part of the entire, it was part of the entire uh, debt ceiling deal, right. as, I, as I recall. And I voted against that. Right. But one of the reasons I did was, was this, because it takes money away from Social Security, which we're putting back in from the general fund. Right. But politically, what it does is remove the argument that Social Security has nothing to do with the deficit. You shouldn't right. even talk about it in the same terms. It's self finance which it is until now. Um, and eventually, now, at this point, we have to renew this because the economy demands it. To not renew this would be a kick in the teeth and would probably throw close to a million people out of work. But it's not, it, I wish we hadn't done it in the first place. Jen Psaki, quickly, I want you to just respond to, to what Congressman Nadler said about the, and this is an argument that Republicans have now adopted. I'm getting, I'm losing track of who's on which side. <laughs> but, but this is an argument Republicans have adopted, which is basically that this, this is, this starves Social Security of revenue, and that's, and, and that's one of the we're reasons. we're putting it back. We're putting the money back. You know, I, I know, I understand, I know this has been a big argument out there, but 
Uh, but it, w what's important to remember here is this is a, this is a proposal that uh, both sides have agreed on in the past. Is it perfect? Is it the top number one thing the president would do if he could do anything to stimulate the economy? It may not be, but at the end of the day, uh, private sector economists, Democrats and Republicans have agreed that this is a positive step we could do to help the economy, and there's no reason there should even be a debate in Congress right now. They should be moving to pass this. This should be moving forward. We should be moving on to the next thing on the agenda. Jen Psaki, former Deputy Director of Communications in the Obama White House, SVP at Global Strategy Group. Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Occupy Wall Street targeted President Obama and other Democrats this week. That story coming up next.